I was excited to present this year's presentation on systemic therapy for high-risk biochemically recurrent prostate cancer. Prior to this, we had always talked about when to start, um, meaning early or delayed therapy, and, and we learned that waiting two years really didn't change overall survival. And then we looked at, should we do it intermittent versus continuous? And we learned that continuous versus intermittent also didn't change substantially. And that at least for people whose doubling time was greater than six months, um, intermittent was equal and had a better quality of life. What changed this year was the EMBARC trial. So that really looked at people whose PSA doubling times were less than or equal to nine months. The thing that we had known all along was that Gleason score, higher Gleason score, and shorter PSA doubling time really made a difference in terms of earlier metastases-free survival. So this EMBARC trial asked the question about those patients with a doubling time of less than or equal to nine months, and they randomized them to either enzalutamide alone, enzalutamide plus luprolide, or luprolide alone. And what they found was that both of the enzalutamide arms had a significant prolonged metastasis-free survival. Although this is FDA approved to use enzalutamide earlier on, many medical oncologists, including myself, are not yet feeling comfortable to use the Embark model until the survival data has matured. So right now, as the authors suggest in their paper, the, uh, the data is immature. And so we are all waiting on the overall survival data to really use uh, the Embark data as the standard of care, even though it is FDA approved. I would also clarify that we know the difference and we, we do it with sort of the eyeball test, right? And what the PSA doubling time is. We know that for people whose doubling time is less than three months, they will likely have metastases on their scans. We know that people with PSA doubling times of you know three to six months uh, and even as low as PSAs of 0.5 um, or even two are likely to have micrometastatic disease or disease we can see on PSMA scans. So effectively, they're already metastatic. And so that starts to be overlapping populations to the metastatic population, which we would routinely treat with continuous ADT with a novel hormonal agent and uh, androgen deprivation therapy. And so this is really a, a evolving story, and I'm excited to see um, where this falls out and excited to see the overall survival when that comes out from the Embark study.